Sonia Rodriguez, welcome to the show. Thank you. So great to be here. Congratulations. Thank you. How have you been feeling? Been feeling very content. Yeah. Um, it's been an overwhelming, you know, um, past 10 days, I will say, uh, just going into that last performance. Um, but there was, um, yeah, a sense of peace and calmness uh, the whole way through that I, yeah, I did not expect, honestly. Uh, it kind of caught me by surprise waking up that last, uh, you know, the morning of the show and just just feeling so ready for it and um, no real nervous feeling going into it, just uh, excitement to, to share the performance with the audience and with the company. And uh, yeah, it was very gratifying. Could you could you put your headphones on for me for yes. a second? I just want to play you something. So okay. I want to, I want to go back a little bit in time to to that night. Just take, okay. Take a listen to this. So that right there, you can you can take them off. So that right there is a recording mm -hmm. of the curtain call yes. of your last night. There are you're high fiving the other people in the cameras. <laughs> yes. The ticker tape is streaming down all around you, and I can't get over the ovation that you're getting there. Mm -hmm. How was that? What was that moment like? I'm just trying to just you know take it all in and. And not get distracted by anything, you know, like really be in the moment. But I, I think my whole day was about that, you know, from beginning to end was to uh, make sure that I was really present, you know, not have any distractions and, and um, yeah, just absorb it all. And so what, so what did that absorption feel like? What does the absorption feel like when that, when it's over, when the yeah. applause is coming in mm -hmm. and it, I mean, I don't want to say it's sort of symbolic, but it is sort of the big last big applause yeah you know it's been it's, it's been my home for as you said 32 years you know I, I grew I grew up essentially in that company so it's um you know there's a lot of emotions going yeah uh, you know through my head and and uh, and just trying to to know what that means you know not not have that family there for me all every day you know that like they have been uh, day in and day out. I think that's sort of what I'm going to miss the most. I mean, I, the performing and being the center stage and, and being right there, it's, uh, you know, we all aim for us as performers and artists is that, that, that time on stage. But it's the, the every day, you know, that you kind of take for granted is the, the building, the preparing, the camaraderie, the friendships uh, that are, you know, for life that you build that I'm going to miss the most for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell. I can yeah, tell from yeah, the high yeah. fives. Yeah. Of how much you know. <laughs> yeah. Why did you choose this role of all the roles for the last one? Oh, goodness. I mean, there's many things uh, when you're trying to uh, program something like this that have to fall into place, right? There's It's a bit, a, a bit of a puzzle. <laughs> like something like this, like uh, something like the last role. The last role and how that fits into um, a season as well, you know, um, that, that has many other pieces, not just me, <laughs> yeah. uh, to take into consideration. But um, this particular ballet was checking a lot of the boxes that I was looking for. So... Um, I wanted um, to to have my last performance to be a full length ballet. I wanted to have the company on stage with me. That was really important. Uh, I wanted to have my colleagues um, share that moment with me on stage, and me feed off of their energy and know that they were there for me. Um, th this particular <laughs> ballet, as as you said, is not your typical ballet. Um, and it's a huge challenge um, dramatically for the for the for the artist that's tackling this role. It's a very complex role for you. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those roles that I think uh, 
needed to come into the repertoire at the time that it did for me to be able to tackle it. You know, I think you need a certain maturity as an artist and as a person to even start to comprehend what this woman is all about and how to, to go about it. So um, I was fortunate that it did come into our repertoire back in 2017, I believe it was. And um, I was so grateful for it. I was just... Um, over the moon that I got the opportunity to to tackle it, to discover it. Um, and then um, thinking, you know, I'm going to retire to have the opportunity to do it one more time. You know, we put so much time and effort into um, getting a performance ready. You know, you work on something, especially when it's brand new for, you know, over a month and a half. And, and then you get, you know, just a few shows and then that's it. You know, you don't get to do it again. Maybe if you're lucky in four years or five years, it comes back around. Yeah. So um, thinking, you know, I get a chance to, to do it one more time before, before I say bye, you know, goodbye. And this would be one of those performances that I would never get to do again if I didn't have the chance now. Is there meaning in that you chose a challenging role for your last role? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going right now from the company, not because I feel that I cannot sustain uh, the challenges that, you know, are presented to me as a principal dancer, but more because I feel like um, I've done everything I wanted to do. Yeah. And um, and I feel like it's just the right time and I want to go in a time where I'm, I'm not making compromises uh, yeah. about my work and what I want to do and, uh, and what people see up on stage. So yeah, I wanted to go with something that uh, was challenging physically, emotionally, um, I love uh, roles that are, um, you know, emotionally demanding and uh, and that they take a lot of homework <laughs> on my part to to discover and and that allow me to to have to be fully present in the moment to live from beginning to end. I love the journey of of going through the life of a character on stage. So um, there was just a lot of things, you know, about Blanche that uh, yeah were really special to me and that I wanted to experience one more time. What made you start wanting to dance in the first place? Oh, gosh. Um, so a while ago. How old were you? Uh, I was five years old when I first enrolled into ballet classes. Why would you do that at five years yeah, old? Yeah, right. Um, so I had seen a performance of Swan Lake on television. Where were, where were you living at the time? In Madrid. Okay. Yeah. And um, there was something about uh, this world that I was discovering by watching, you know, that um, these women on stage just seemed um, to be transporting me into, into a magical place that I did not know about. And... Um, they just look so beautiful, and um, and I've always had this uh, need to move to music. For me, music was a, a, a big driving force to want to dance um, and and just lose myself in the music. and And there was a real sense of freedom by watching them that I was um, sort of yearning to be part of that I really wanted to experience. So. Um, I begged my parents to enroll me into some classes, and then it was nothing like that. <laughs> it was nothing. Um, the experience did not match my expectations. You, you in were any expecting way. a certain amount of glamour and beauty. Just, I think, a sense of, as I say, freedom and movement that uh, you know was very contrived. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was just I was not getting the same sort of. Yeah, experience that I thought I was going to. And so honestly, I did not really enjoy it that much. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I stuck with it. Uh, Were you? Did you have a natural aptitude for it? I don't think at five you can say that, no. Okay. Um, it's not like piano. Like with piano, you can, and, and a lot yeah. of music instruments, you can find that people have a musical aptitude. Yeah. I mean, I... No, and I didn't even I think at five I see some pictures of me. It's not like I had like a crazy physique either. <laughs> yeah. You would go, oh, wow, you know. Um, but yeah, it it just sort of slowly took over my being. <laughs> I think by by the age of twelve, I definitely knew that that's what I was going to be. That I was going to be a dancer. Yeah. You auditioned for the National Ballet on Valentine's Day. 
I did. 17 years old? 17, yeah. So I had um, won a competition in Italy, and uh, the head of the jury was Miss Betty Oliphant, who was the uh, the director of the National Ballet School at yeah. the time. Yeah. And she had um, sort of come forth and, and thought I would be a good match for the company. And so she had had conversations with the then former uh, director of the company, Reed Anderson, who, who had just taken over the company. And Did you know uh, anything about Canada? Like, was Canada... Well, I was born in Canada. Yeah. So I had this sort of... Uh, idolized idea of what Canada was all about. and You had left when you were how old? Uh, just just before I was uh, turned five, yeah. So you, you, you sort of had this idea of what Canada yeah, was. From, had yeah, I had no real sense of <laughs> what, what it was about. But um, yeah, I think growing up in Spain, just in the outskirts of Madrid, you know, saying that I, you know, th- that I had been born in Canada seemed like a very exotic thing for, for those kids. <laughs> wow, uh, she's, she's Canadian. I wow. know, I know. And, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to come back and uh, and just sort of um, see my, you know, my, my country of birth and uh, spend some time. And uh, when the opportunity came to, you know, to come and, I mean, very naively, I, I came just thinking I was just going to check things out and you know I didn't really think much about it and um, I got a contract offer right there and then and so what's what's the audition like what do you can you can you yeah. remember it can you remember what the day was like can you remember what you had to do yeah so you do essentially you I audition I mean there's different processes because yeah. this wasn't an open audition I came already kind of recommended by the director wanted to see me he said you know you have highly recommended um, but um, was it snowing <clears throat> was it snowing yes and my mother sent me with a, a fur coat <laughs> Um, I'm not sure why at <laughs> 17 I should be showing up to Canada with a fur coat. Uh, I'm imagining but, you, you know, walking she, into the audition with a, with a fur coat on. Uh, yeah, that's so no, no, I didn't show up. I, I, I think I knew better than that. But uh, I did show up <laughs> at the back then the um, O'Keefe Center to watch one of the performances with my fur coat, yes. Um, but... Yeah, no, I came in to do an audition that was just for me. So it was just part of their day. So there was nothing uh, different for the company happening, except that there was this young Spaniard showing up at their class. And so I auditioned during their class. um, And the director just came and just watched. And um, Did you speak English or? No, not really. Yeah. I have a, a few words here and there. So I had my cousin with me who who lived here. And uh, she translated. Uh, she came into the office with me. Yeah. And uh, I tell you what strikes me about about the whole thing is that so you're 17. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned, you get accepted into the National Ballet, and you were two and a half inches shorter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> than you are There's now. There's a lot of growing to do, and from every angle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but height, uh-huh. and what that tells me, yeah, is that you were not finished like growing as a child grows yeah when you I was a late bloomer is that what you're implying yeah that's what, no that's what i mean that's what i mean it's what i'm what i'm doing is criticizing you I <laughs> no i mean how do you reflect on that that you were a child mm-hmm. you were still growing when you joined the national mm-hmm. ballet company no absolutely i think that's why i was impulsive as well you know i mean um, you know, as you grow older, you start thinking of other things. But when you're 17, it's like, yeah, great. That sounds like a great idea. I'm going to move to Canada. Um, yeah, you just don't think much, you know. Um, at least I, I didn't. I, I was really going on impulse. And the company was an incredible company. Of course, I had done some research. I didn't just show up not knowing anything. Uh, but um, it had an amazing repertoire that I was really interested in. And... Um, my parents felt somewhere comfortable letting me come here because I had family. So it was really far from home, but at least I think they felt comfortable that I wasn't on my own fully. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was just exciting. But I mean, it all hit pretty hard within the first month, you know, of of being here. I was extremely homesick and yeah had terrible headaches from trying to concentrate so much, just trying to understand what people were saying all day. Uh, I just smiled a lot. And 
I think I was likable, so that was nice. <laughs> I yeah. think I was, you know the company was very welcoming. I was the youngest at the time when I first joined, and yeah, I would have never thought that I, you know, set roots um, fully here. But yeah, thirty-two years later, yeah. I, I'm no expert on ballet, mm -hmm. um, as we talked about before mm -hmm. you came in, but I am a great fan of it. Like, mm -hmm. and I, it's it's sort of like. Um, sports to me and that I, I don't always know what I'm watching, but I always am quite moved by it. So when I was doing research for this and when we were doing research for this, you know, one thing we kept on coming across when it comes to your work is that, now how do I say this, that you would bring, not that you would bring parts of yourself to every role, but every role and character sometimes felt like it was reflective of something inside of you. Yes, I think that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't like just doing steps for the sake of doing steps. And uh, when it comes down to particular roles, I, I really try to come in um, uh, open-minded as a blank canvas physically, but also... Um, you know, with no sort of prejudgment of who I'm going to embody and and really try to understand from every angle who this character is. And then I, what I find so rewarding is that I always f learn something about myself, you know, by, by tackling the various roles that I do and trying to understand who they are. So that's part of the job that I love so much is that I feel... Do, do you have an example? Yeah, just, I mean, I always find that, uh, you know, there's always sort of similarities on, and um, and it's hard at times. <laughs> um, but it's, I, I, f I find tackling certain roles that are very character-based, that are very much about humanity and that... Um, it becomes a little bit of a therapy in a way for my own life, you know, and it just, you know, it comes at different points and in, in where you're at in your own, in your own life. And so it rings to you. The truth rings to you a little bit different depending on where you are. But how, how do you mean? Um, oh, gosh. Well, when it comes down to relationships, how, you know, maybe yeah. there's a character that's going through some um, something big, big, yeah, sort of a big breakup or falling in love, something like that, or, yeah. yeah okay. And then you know, uh, instead of judging them <laughs> for what they're doing or their, you know, their choices, it's uh, it's really nice to sort of put the mirror on yourself and see how that reflects on you and your life and your choices. And um, I think when you have to become somebody, you have to be sympathetic and you have to be vulnerable to to be able to become them and uh there's a lot of learning um within within yourself that comes from putting that work and putting yourself in that situation yeah but in order to do that you have to well i guess i'm just i'm, I'm reflecting on something you said earlier when i was asking you about the last show mm -hmm. A couple of times mm -hmm. you said the same thing to me. You said, I just wanted to make sure I, I was present. I wasn't thinking too much about mm -hmm. anything else that was going on. Mm -hmm. And I guess it made me think about how challenging that must be in ballet. You know, it's something I struggle with even in mm -hmm. this work, but I'm, just, I'm mm -hmm. sitting down and chatting. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not having to do unbelievably challenging physically mm -hmm. movements. Mm -hmm timed with music, with a company. Has that been a challenge for you? Well, that's what I strive for. I Presence. mean, sometimes it is a little bit challenging, but I think that's what's so beautiful about or what I love so much is the fact that um, I can do that. I, I can, when I'm in that zone, that it's it, nothing else can, can break in. And, you know, being able to achieve that, it's... An incredible feeling. I feel like I 
yeah, it's very difficult to do that in my normal life. <laughs> you know, I feel like there's always something distracting me from something else. And to have those moments where you can just be, it's almost like a sense of um, um, meditation in a way, you know. It's a, it's a real escape from everything. And not because you're living something else so fully. But uh, um, that's what I strive for. And it's it's not always you know, yeah. there. Uh, and most it, of the time it and, is. And it can't be, it, it must be something that comes with time. Like, I'm sure when you're first starting, you're so scared and you're mm-hmm. so worried about your steps, it's hard to be present in, mm-hmm. in, in the in the moment and, mm-hmm. and the actual mm-hmm. performance of what you're doing. Yeah. I'm sure it comes with time. It does, absolutely. And uh, experience and uh, confidence in yourself and your abilities, yeah. Um, but even then, it's not always like that. I mean, I... I had some performances where, you know, I I was in it, I was performing and everything else, but I didn't feel like I was fully immersed. You know, I felt slightly detached and, you know, I find myself just going, come on, no, like, you know, and for the audience, it would be exactly the same because you're, you you wouldn't know. But for me on a personal level, it's just not quite where I want to be. Sometimes, you know, that happens is... You don't know why, but something there's a little distraction, and yeah. could be the energy from other people as well, or yeah. um, just takes a little bit longer. But um, I was so grateful that my last show was from beginning to end, honestly, just the journey that I was hoping for. Yeah, I think I think what it also is is the is the work, and I'm trying to figure out how to ask you this now too. So most professional dancers mm-hmm. retire at what 30 oh, odd goodness. right yeah it de- it depends I, I think i mean there's so many things that make somebody retire from this profession obviously depends how much you've accomplished and how do you see your future and you know uh but yes that's a that's a pretty good estimate i will say right so i've been around a little longer so what yeah you're to uh, say? what what has to be <laughs> You're taking the words right out of my mouth here. What has to, what has enabled you to last so much longer in this business than most of your, if not all of your contemporaries, virtually all of your contemporaries? Um, I mean, I love it. That's one sure, thing. But I'm sure they um, love it I too. haven't lost. I feel like. I mean, several things, maybe. Um, I've tried always um, to be really open to exploring anything new, you know? So I I try very hard not to um, create barriers for myself. Um, I feel like other people already do that <laughs> in this job. And so I try to really come um, into my work ready to explore new things every day. And with that, I mean, even within just working on my technique, but also just exploring new new ways of movement, um, working with different choreographers, uh, just be really open-minded to any possibility and see where it can take me. So I find that challenging. I find it very rewarding. Um, it makes it exciting for me because I never feel like I'm not growing or I'm not changing, I'm not evolving, right? Which is, I think, what, if you get to that point, then it's like, well, what am I doing here? Yeah, um, it, so it's, e- it's easy to get to your 30s yeah, and sort of feel like, well, I've done... A little boxed in, maybe, or, yeah. I've done all I can. Yeah, exactly. And that never... No, I kept... I mean, I was also fortunate, and I don't know if it's... Maybe because I put that energy out there, but that I, you know, I had the opportunity to to work with, with lots of different choreographers and, and explore a lot of different things. And one thing is to say I want to, and another thing is to actually have the opportunity. You know, they come in and they either want to work with you or they don't. You know, it's not like... Um, you get to choose. So um, that's, you know, that's always kept me challenged and um, felt alive. My colleagues inspire me every day, honestly. Like I just, 
I feel like I'm always learning from all of them. Forgive me for asking this if, mm-hmm. if you don't want to talk about it. Does the, does the physical part mm-hmm. of the job change as you get older? Uh, absolutely, yeah. But where's the, you don't have a lot of wood. You have beautiful leather here. Um, what do we have? We have these, uh, are, these you know, are wood over here. <laughs> yes, yeah. your, your little monitor there. Oh, yeah, but, do you want this? You can have that. Uh, yeah, let's just do a little tap. Oh, yeah, uh, knock on wood, sure, okay, sure, 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 sure. Okay. I thought you were going to do something. No. Okay. Um, my body has been very good to me. Right. You know, I have had uh, some, you know, challenges, you know, with some injuries, but it's never kept me away from doing what I wanted to do or s- stopped me physically Uh from, you know, the challenges that were presented to me. So I was very fortunate that way. And you just never know. <laughs> um, so in that sense, yes, uh, I've been lucky. Uh, the body does change, of course. And yeah. I've, I've had two children, and that's also a challenge too, right, you know, yeah. coming back from that. and um, But you learn, right? Like you learn t- to use your tool on you. You learn your strengths and you learn your weaknesses and you learn to embrace those as as something positive as well. And um, I think it works in your favor at the end of the day. Want to put your headphones back on? Okay. Okay. So I wanted to play another clip here. Okay. So this is Rex Harrington, uh-huh. someone you spent a lot of time dancing <laughs> yes. with, who works as a ballet coach talking about you mm-hmm. at one of your last rehearsals for Streetcar. Had some much better work, I think, than I ever did. I mean, I would skip class or not come in, or I know I just love being on stage and to see Sonia every day come in and set the example and be there and work. And she's there before everyone else, and it's consistent and it's every day, and that's what you need to do in order to have that career. You know, it's it's a great example that she sets for the younger dancers by showing what it takes to to maintain and be at that level. I mean, it's it's amazing. So, never skipping a rehearsal. What, what I hear there, and you'll, uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. What I hear there is, yes, you always want to have new opportunities, and you're, and you're looking forward to new choreographers and new creative passions, mm-hmm. and that is what's kept you going, mm-hmm. you know, when your contemporaries have, have left the business, mm-hmm. you know, 10 years before. What I hear there is, is the work. Mm-hmm. You've never stopped putting in the work of this, which is considerable amounts of work for this. But the, I love the process. I never really felt like do. a grind or anything? It never... I mean, I guess I'll be lying if it said never for like a grind on <laughs> those days. That, yeah, you're just like, oh, I really don't feel like doing class today. But, um, you know, once you're there, it's, it take, kind of takes over. Um, but no, I love the process. That's the thing. Like for me, the um, working towards a performance is as rewarding as a, as a performance itself. Like I love the time in the studio uh, discovering you know, what I need to do. And um, I love the um, relationships that you build with your partner um, that are like nothing else, honestly, because it's it's such an intimate, uh, such a trusting relationship that you need to build, you know, in order to, to do your job at your best. And uh, I, I find that so beautiful, you know, to have that opportunity. Um, um, so I just I just love it. Like I love coming into the studio and spending six hours working on something. You know, like I find it so fulfilling. And um, yeah, just like yeah, finding little nuances. You know, not just technically, but within the characters. And yeah, I just really really love that. Are there things when you dance professionally for thirty two years? Are there things in life that you miss out on? Meaning in life in yeah. general? <laughs> I mean, I think about that with... <laughs> because it's all consuming, is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah, it is all consuming. Um, no, I mean, I've, I've tried to be a well-rounded individual to, you know, for the most part. But it is all time consuming. I mean, it's... Before kids, it was even more so. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's a profession that it's it's very selfish in a sense that it's all about you, you know, and your conditioning and your needs to, you know, you to be able to perform at your best. And so it's all about, you know, did I sleep enough? Did I eat enough? Did I, you know, don't bother me now? Don't, you know, it's all, 
yeah, it's so centered to doing the best uh, that you can, and it's all about you. And then you have children, and it's not about you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a uh, it's a real wake up call. But it, it's it's also something that made me much stronger um, as an individual and as an artist. I think to have children, and um, yeah, I, f- I felt I, I was very empowered, <laughs> you know, when when I had my first child, and I felt like I could tackle anything. Like I was like superhuman. The feeling did not last forever, but <laughs> <laughs> it was certainly there, and uh, I was, and you know, just so surprised, you know, that I didn't need uh, all the attention that I thought I needed you know, that I was so much stronger than I thought I was and uh, that I could do so much more. So it was actually amazing, you know, um, feeling to discover that. And then with the second one, even more. (laughs) But, yeah. I've heard you say that even though you won't be dancing, Mm -hmm. you're still a dancer. Yeah, I think you're always a dancer. What does that mean if you're a dancer and you don't dance? I think it's an identity, you know, I think it's just not a job. I think that's what I mean by that, you know, it's, uh, it's the essence of who you are, really. So even if I was doing another job, I will always feel like I'm a dancer, like that's who I am, really. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm hoping to still be able to do some performances in some form here and there. I don't plan to just disappeared. From. Oh, you're still hoping to do a little bit or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when I say I retired, I I retired from the position that I was in and principal dancer. Principal dancer of the National Ballet of oh, Canada. Oh, 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 <laughs> um, you know, and, and what comes with that, but I look forward to hopefully finding other outlets and other opportunities to do projects that interest me that you know catch my eye that allow me to still discover you know um, different ways of expressing myself on stage yeah you have been getting a lot of notes and messages and uh, all that mm-hmm. phone calls and all, all that, that yes i bet mm-hmm. over the past couple of days since mm-hmm. your last show mm-hmm. i'll put you on the spot now oh gosh okay can you tell me one piece of feedback or one note you got or one message you got from someone that was particularly meaningful to you? You're putting me in the spot. I am. One? I have to pick you, one. You but can pick as many as you want, but I, I just, I'd love for an example. I mean, there's been so many crazy uh, sort of messages that had just touched my heart. Um, you know, from... Um, from uh, coaches, you know, that I've respected immensely for so many years. Um, you know, there was this this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful uh, dancer, ballerina, that um, uh, he, she is in charge of all the Balanchine um, uh, ballets that we do, and she sets them with us. And uh, I've known Joyce Ann Sidemus for, well, since I joined the company. And um, she passed on this <laughs> this beautiful gift to me where it was she had this beautiful car that um, made me very emotional just talking about all the years that we've known each other. But then she had this beautiful gift, which was um, a pendant um, that a fan had given to her back when she was dancing with New York City Ballet in 1963. The company was on tour, and some fan had not said anything, just handed it to her. And she passed it on to me as the fan that she is of mine now, and uh, or has been. She goes, I'm passing it on to you. And I thought that was so touching and so meaningful, you know, and... Uh, Yeah, that was really special. But there's been so many, you know, from hearing stories of how, you know, fans first came to watch ballet and fell in love with one of my performances. And now they, you know, that's what sort of kept them going to, yeah, just help them in their lives watching something to, it's just, it's been 
really overwhelming and really beautiful. And um, there was also lots of messages of um, colleagues that are now not in the company anymore, and they were just sharing stories of, you know, moments that we experienced together. And I felt like what was so special about that was that lots of those I forgotten, you know, like I feel like we can only hold on to so many yeah. memories of our lives. And um, I, I often feel that um, so, so much of my life, it's, it's missing so many pieces that I, you know, I haven't been able to hold on to. Um, and so to have them share um, those moments that were so meaningful to them and that I was part of and sort of gain, gain them back and be able to relive them was such a beautiful gift, you know, too. It's like I'm getting more of my life back. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's a really beautiful gift to, you know, take this past like three days to just read all these stories and read all these cards and letters and messages. And um, yeah, it's been really, really special. Well, it's so um, well deserved and so um, right that you're feeling this way because, you know, if there's one thing I've seen since your last, the announcement of your last show as, princ as principal dancer, not your last show ever, but your last show as principal <laughs> dancer, is a tremendous sense of gratitude, not just from other dancers, but from so many people just in this country, feeling so grateful to you for everything that you gave us over the years. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Sonia Rodriguez just retired from the National Ballet of Canada after 32 years with the company. And we are very excited to have you back for whatever you do next. Oh, I look forward to it. Thank you for having me here today. <laughs>